Well, EV Engine now takes out a ton of the work. You can just displace in a few clicks. In fact, it's really not difficult enough that I have to have a long tutorial, but I will go over a couple things that will help you guys out. Also, while I was doing this tutorial, I thought, you know what, let me make an add-on real quick for you guys. This is the quick Add EV Bloom add-on. Just a few buttons, super simple. You come in here with an emissive object. It's got some kind of strength. Just click Add Bloom. If you happen to have deleted your glare node, it'll put it back. If you delete both of these, it'll put it back. It's not going to put the composite node in. That is what happens when Use Nodes is clicked, and the add-on does that in the background. Now, it's disabled currently, but if we take up a camera view, we could turn on Bloom. And then kind of play around with the mix here. You got some steps. This is pretty cool. I've always liked that. I kind of like superhero power-ups. Uh, you got a threshold here. And then you can have it set where it's only the camera or always or disabled. Super simple. I'll be giving this add-on away free. It will be on the Gumroad along with the um, other add-on. I'm just going to leave it in there. You guys can choose which one you want to use. I think you're going to want this one. And yeah, if you feel like donating something to the cause on the Gumroad, I greatly appreciate it because it does help out the channel. This is something I would like to do uh, a lot more than uh, the day job. But uh, we'll just see as I get better at making these add-ons. Polyhaven.com is usually my first stop. And what we're going to do is we can pull any one of these materials and let's see, let's find something good. I kind of like this. I like this rock right here. This was made five years ago, but whatever. I'm going to drag this out. I want to put it in as 4K. I'll go ahead and download that. And once that downloads, I'll jump back into a fresh copy of Blender. And let's pull this up. I've got to extract that real quick. And, you know, just if you guys don't have a folder set up, I would advise doing that. I'll try to keep something on the desktop that is basically for any textures. So I'll just call this my new rock folder. Let's hit enter, select, extract. Should take a second or so. Now that's done. It'll be very easy. Delete the default cube. You know we gotta do it. And instead of pulling up a plane, let's pull up a grid. And the grid should be subdivided quite a bit. I'm gonna do 100. And that's going to give us a lot of geometry to work with. We can even do a subsurf on this uh, after it's all said and done. Let's get a new workspace here. And we're going to call this a shader editor. We're going to do a comparison afterwards. So you guys can see what we had to work with before. That grainy cycles. Uh, just not fun. Not fun to work with at all. And doing this in real time is so much better. So with Node Wrangler enabled, shift Control t then go find your texture. Pretty simple. And if you did download from them, you don't click the blend file. Go into the textures, select them all, hover the mouse over, and hit Enter. Now let's jump over into the EV engine. It's going to take a second. All right, cool. It's a nice texture. I really like it, but you can't see anything yet. And I do want to make sure, yep, got the... Graphics card going. Let's see, we are in EV Engine. That is good. Let's come on down. Color management. I want this to look nice. I'll put it to high contrast. I always do that. Love it. Go to the texture. Scroll all the way to the bottom. And let's go from bump only to displacement and bump. And then you're going to get this mess. So you want to go down to your displacement node. And let's bring that scale down. Now let's move back in. And let's bring that scale up a touch. I think this looks really, really, really nice, and it's going to work well as rotating the lights across here, and we'll get some nice shadows and get some good lighting. Now, the next thing that I want to do is just amp this up a touch more. We can throw a subdivision surface on that, and I can see that cleaned it up a lot with just one, but you are going to need a lot of geometry if you want to bring out all of the details. So if we turn this off, you can see... That's a lot of detail you're losing if you don't have a subsurf on there. So that's about as difficult as that gets. Um, there's a few ways to jump in. You can use your asset library and throw some things in and go from there.
Now we're over here and I've got the real-time render over here with Eevee and I've got cycles over here and you can see this nice grainy effect as you're trying to do your displacement and it's kind of laggy. I really don't like that and if I come over here we're working a heck of a lot better and before I forget there's something you need to do well you can do it this way or whatever you want but I choose to put object vector so it looks a lot better it'll map it across your object a little bit cleaner and look nice and just to be fair we'll do the same thing over here object to vector and there you go I mean it's not terrible and I just threw the subsurf on there and so now we've got this lagging out and hey if you don't have a super fast PC with Twin NVIDIA cards, EV Engine is literally going to be your lifesaver. So I like the detail here much, much better. And the fact I don't really have to do a whole lot to achieve really good results. So let's go ahead and try something and build our own texture. I think that's also something we need to try. Now one thing I did notice, I came over here to start another little demo piece for you guys and instead found this little glitch. I am not sure what's causing this split edge effect on a regular mesh object, but I really don't like it. So I won't be covering anything else on that until I can figure out why it's doing it. It shouldn't just be my copy, but it is what it is. Another amazing feature that I think is something that held me up from using EV Engine a lot was the fact that we now can go in and turn on shadows and get shadows with HDRI lighting environment textures. So when you are able to come in here now and start casting different shadows, and it's a little hard to see with that one, let's switch this. And now we can see the shadows here with the HDRI. This is kind of a game changer. It's a very big deal. Uh, you don't have to bake indirect lighting anymore, and we have ray tracing inside of Blender as well for EV Next. Uh, there's a few settings in here you can play around with, but just know that with your emissive objects, uh, you're now going to get those reflections, like the screen space reflections, only with ray tracing. So that's going to be a heck of a lot better. And yeah, lots to look forward to as Blender continues. And you can see that all the objects here are catching that. We don't have to bake that indirect lighting anymore. That is quite amazing. Also, one more thing in case this is not on for you guys and you're over here. Go over to your world properties. And if by chance the shadow is not turned on, mine was on by default. This is for the world settings, uh, then you won't get those shadows that won't be there. So I don't want you guys to miss out. And one other thing, you could actually come over here and we can go ahead and add an environment texture through the world properties as well. It's pretty easy. Just come in, open. And let me see, I'm just going to find an HDR folder. I've got some HDRIs here. I like the sand salute. This one looks pretty good. Go to scene world. And I can turn that on. And we'll still get those shadows and those screen space reflections. Or should I say ray tracing now in EV Engine. That's just so wild. Absolutely love it. And don't forget about the compositor setup I've got for you guys. Just a quick, easy add-on called EVB. It will be absolutely free. You don't have to pay anything. It'll be on the Gumroad. Like I said, if you want to donate a dollar, support the cause. Support your fellow Blender head. And, you know, I give out a lot of uh, add-ons on my Patreon, too. So if you wanted to jump over to the Patreon, you can do that. And you'll get free add-ons just subbing up free. Well, I just call it the free membership. You come in free, you'll still get add-ons. If you sub up, you'll get some of my more powerful add-ons. And yeah, that's about it. I appreciate everybody watching. Smash that subscribe. Smash that like button if this was useful. Drop something in the comments. If you guys need something added to this add-on, you would like it to maybe have a different setup. I can do full setups for the add-on. 
and make it connect any nodes automatically uh, like whatever whatever you want it'll it'll do it so yep yeah, that's basically it um appreciate you guys watching see you